Once the, t the pot has gotten to much more of a stiffer leather hard so that it holds its shape in these hips that we just created, um, then I'm gonna put the feet on the pot. And one trick I found is to just cover the, the bottom of the pot with a little bit of plastic. Um, a lot of times I'll also put them back on one of those uh, plastic bats so that the foot stays much damper than the rest of the pot. Because I want everything else to hold its shape, but I need to be able to work with the foot. And so I usually trim just a tiny bit of clay off the bottom. And I think I just do this to give me a nice even surface to work with. And then also when I'm throwing, I get sort of this little flange where your fingers can't get all the way down to the wheel. So I'm just trimming that away. And then kind of compress the inside, a little bit of water on my hands. And then to make the feet, I just press down the negative spaces. going to pinch the little feet together. I don't press this all the way together. I've found that if I add a little bit of clay in there, I can get a better seam and it doesn't crack. And also, I kind of like the <clears throat> negative space under the pot if it's much more shallow, which you'll see once I flip this over. So I'm just joining this together really well. And then also kind of bending the feet around, making little, I guess you could call them little toes out of the clay here. So some pots, I don't want the feet to be symmetrical. I want them to look more like they're walking. Um, I found on the teapots that they just look a little nicer aesthetically if they're fairly symmetrical. I'm not measuring it again. I'm just kind of eyeballing everything. So they're probably not exact, but um, I think because with the spout and handle and everything, they look a little bit nicer if they're fairly symmetrical. Teapots are pretty fun because there's so many parts that you can add a lot of information and really make them look like your own pot. So by making feet like this and in your spout and handle and lid, it's a lot of places to add information. So then I'm gonna just blend the inside seam. And I don't, I don't score this where the feet came together. I don't know, I feel like the clay is still fairly wet when I do this and it's not really, it's not really a seam. They're just kind of folded over. But I'm gonna blend that together. And then I'm gonna cut a bevel in here. So when I add a piece of clay, I'll cut that at a, at a bevel and can just lay it down in here. So when I'm adding this piece of clay in the bottom of the pot, I like to think about <clears throat> making the little slab of clay the same thickness as the wall of the pot that I threw. I think with these small pots, it probably doesn't matter, but as they get bigger, I think it's important. So I cut the slab of clay at, on two sides at that bevel, and then I just lay it in here, and that will mark the other two sides. So I just press it, press it down really lightly. Um, sometimes it helps to mark which direction it goes. So then I have these two lines, and this line is actually the outside of the bevel, so as I cut it, I'm gonna cut just a little bit on the inside. And hopefully it just fits in there. It's better to make it a little too big than a little too small, because you can always trim more away. Then I'm gonna score. And I, I like to just use a little bit of water. I don't use much slip. If the pot's really dry, I'll just score a little extra, put some water on there, and then 
sort of create a slip on from the clay that's there from the surface of the pot. And then I've got that little mark so I remember which direction it goes in there. And then because of that bevel, I've got a little bit of clay that I can kind of drag across the surface to join it together. And again, just like the darts that I put on this pot, I like to get rid of these seams so that you really have to look closely to figure out how this was made. Then I'm gonna get rid of that seam on the inside with the same tool that I was using earlier. Um, I think it's nice to pay attention to all the little details of pots. So I like to make sure even on the inside it's finished really nice. You never know who's gonna look in there. And I think by adding this little slab of clay, you won't get cracking if you really join the inside well. So after I get that seam smooth together, I just take a paintbrush and get rid of all those little tool marks I just added. So there's a nice finished bottom.